To start off, we have four nitrogenous bases, guanine, adenine, cytosine, and thymine. And between these nitrogenous bases, we will have hydrogen bonds. Adenine and thymine get two hydrogen bonds, while guanine and cytosine have three hydrogen bonds. This is called a complementary base pairing because each base can only bond with a specific partner. The structures complement each other in a way that is similar to a lock and a key. Once we get a collection of G's and C's and A's and T's, we will get a sequence that could look like this. Once we pass that sequence, there will be a cluster of DNA or bases that start to lie on top of one another. And this is what we call base stacking. On the inside, you will have your hydrophobic bases, and on the outside, you will have your hydrophilic bases. The hydrophobic interactions are the main force stabilizing the double helix. Within the outside columns, you will have your sugars and phosphates. This makes up the phosphate backbone. The responsibility of the phosphate backbone is to provide structural support to the molecule. Within the phosphate backbone, you will have ribose carbons that make up that structure. The ribose carbons have different attachment sites, and for the one prime site, you will have nitrogenous bases attached to it. For the two prime site, you're gonna be able to distinguish if this is DNA or RNA. DNA will have an H here because it's deoxyribonucleic acid, and RNA will have an OH here, and oxygen is present. The three prime region attaches to the next five prime phosphate, and the five prime region attaches to the phosphate. As the DNA starts to stack and starts to coil and all the appropriate structures are in place, we will get major, and minor grooves. Both help the formation of different proteins while they act as base pair recognition and binding sites for protein. The major groove occurs where the backbone is far apart, making it bigger than the minor groove because the minor groove occurs where they are close together. Here's another picture to demonstrate that major and minor grooves. Within this picture, we can see that the DNA coils in different directions. For the B form, we can see that it's coiling up to the right. A trick to use is placing your arrows and see which way the DNA coils. In this, it'll coil up to the right. For the Z DNA, we can see that it coils up to the left. The arrow technique is a good technique to use, but a different technique we can use is picking out which coils pop out at us and seeing which way it is coiling up. For example, this coil and this coil are popping out at us. We can see that it curves up to the right. This coil and this coil is popping out at us and we see that it curves up to the left. B DNA is the DNA that is found in most humans and typically coils up to the right. There are several examples where the DNA coils up to the left and I will insert them.